I teach biochemistry and this year students just miss and I miss the sense of being there with other people, the presence, and I'm not getting that on Zoom. And so that was the thing that drew me to try out VR in the pandemic was would it, would it recreate that sense of presence, at least to some degree, of really being there with other people sitting around talking. I can see how virtual reality can end up being a major component of the course, not just a supplemental piece, but perhaps the, the central uh, primary component of the learning experience. The protein would be something like this. What's really cool about this particular project is that it allows learners a type of interaction with these 3D objects that they can't get in the real world and then turn them into a first-person experience of ideas and concepts led by an expert. What we learned so far is that interacting with objects in 3D that are relevant to the course is probably the most important advantage that you get from virtual reality. It's created this kind of lab space outside of physical lab space, and especially in 2020, 2021, the academic year that's been very challenging, I think this is really um, made scientific exploration really accessible and um, creative. So it has that sense of sharing a, of, a, of this space together as if we were in the real world. Uh, what we'll start with next week is actually look. So just the idea that we're, we're in this space where you have students kind of working in parallel, I think is a really cool idea. With the new platform, where you talk to someone, their eyes are moving, their eyebrows, their face, their smile, their mouth. You're so convincing that you, the, you're, you're, the voice that's coming out of your avatar is, I know, I know what real, the real Brent looks like, but I'm, I'm convinced I'm talking to this like hipster indie rocker. Um, and it really freaked me out in the beginning. Yeah, we've been fortunate that a number of groups around the university are helping to implement and evaluate the virtual reality tools for teaching. So we're supported by the libraries, the digital technologies there, the Solair Initiative, Science of Learning Research, CUIT, School of Professional Studies, as well as my wife, Melissa Stockwell, who runs clinical trials and is helping us adapt that technology to these studies. The SPS team has been helping, uh, in terms of the course specifically, to help us figure out the kind of pedagogical implementations in the course. Uh, a quick question, is, is it possible? This is asking for a lot, I know. But can we do that in VR? I'm investigating uh, technologies for him, as well as trying to adapt some of his cool virtual reality 3D assets to a browser space so that even students who aren't using VR will have access to those. Here's how you set up your headset. Here's how you get into the space. Here's how you move around and operate your avatar. Here's how you interact with the molecule. Models, models, you know, you can have a small uh, item to pass around the class. And then if you want to- So those will be all asynchronous trainings that are built into the course site. You could recreate uh, some corner of Columbia, bring it in. It just adds a bit of that Columbia touch that we're not just in a, a cold, sterile virtual environment. It would look really amazing to have all these people be on campus in VR. So I wouldn't assume that anyone is particularly exploring this unless uh, the right group of people like here have come together to say, let's, let's give this a shot and try and see what we can make of this.